If you've ever set up a brand new Garmin Edge cycling computer fresh out of the box with its default configuration, you've probably noticed it's a little needy of your attention when you're out on the bike. These newer Garmin Edge units will beep every few kilometers with that default auto lap. They'll alert you of high traffic roads, sometimes a little late when you are on that road. It'll warn you of sharp bends that really aren't that sharp and when you're already turning. Sometimes it will want to tell you about unpaved roads that you're already riding on. And when you finish your ride, it will sometimes ask you about what you ate and what you drank, and maybe tell you how many hours of recovery you'll need. So as I said, these devices in their default configuration can be quite needy of your attention. But the good news is, a lot of those nags and warnings can be switched off. But before I begin, a lot of those features are included on these devices for very good reason. A lot of people will find those useful. But what's good to know is how to turn those off if you don't find them useful. And that's exactly what I'm about to cover in this video today. Now in focus is the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar. This is from the X40 series, so the 540, 840, and 1040 series. And a lot of this information can be applied to the X30 series and also the latest 1050 series from Garmin. First up, I'll look at profile-specific options that you can enable or disable for different bikes, such as road, gravel, mountain, and maybe indoor. And then I'll look at some system-wide options that you can switch off and not worry about being nagged or being alerted halfway through an intersection. Or have to answer to this thing about what you ate and what you drank. Sometimes we want to keep it simple. All right, let's get to the details. Okay, the first thing we'll look at disabling today is on the screen here. This is the guide text or the road names in free ride mode on the map screen. I think it takes up unnecessary real estate. So as I remove the gloves here so I can get better access to the touch screen, I'll go back to the home screen with a single press, back home, press and hold the profile. We'll scroll down to navigation, map, and then guide text. We'll change that to when navigating. So if I'm following a route or a route, I'll have that information on screen of the street names and next turn, etc. But if I'm just riding along in free ride, I don't want that screen real estate taken up by the next street name, which is already on the screen here. And I can see from the street signs anyway. The next one's probably the most common thing people turn off. This is a per profile configuration and it's that auto lap. We go to profile settings, scroll down to alerts and prompts, scroll down the screen to lap and toggle off that auto lap button right there and set it to manual trigger only. Or maybe you can have it trigger on your DI2 or access buttons to have lap, but auto lap, uh, very much an unwelcome addition every time uh, you set up a brand new Garmin Edge or do a refresh of the configuration. 8.05 kilometers, the default, which is five miles on this unit. The 1050 defaults to 10 kilometers here in Australia, which is more, um, I guess, relevant than 8.05 kilometers. Okay, onto more options to disable on a per profile basis. And you can see I'm coming in here just to a standard left-hand turn. I'm given a sharp bend alert on a 90 degree turn at zero meters. Not really that useful. So back to the home screen, press and hold road. We'll go to the profile configuration, alerts and prompts, and toggling off sharp bend warnings. I can see their relevance on, say, a big mountain pass descent, but around town like this, they're of no use whatsoever. I'll also toggle off while I'm here high traffic road warnings, but I will loop back in just a few moments to show you some further information on that. Road hazard warnings, I'm going to leave there. These are very, very useful for hazard reports. But unpaid road warnings, yeah, I'll turn those off as well. For a road bike around town, I know when I'm about to hit an unpaved road, so that's not really relevant. Okay, let's have a look at high traffic road warnings and what we can do with those on the map screen. For this, it's back to the lovely Lake Wendaree, which is even more lovely when the sun comes out sometime around December. Now, what I'm showing here is the standard map screen by default. It's typically what I ride around with, with a few extra data screens down below. This is the default configuration, though, on a Garmin Edge unit. Now, there's no way of telling which is a busy road and which is not. The roads in dark black there, I believe, are popularity routing. So they're a little darker for where cyclists are. But if I want to see where the high traffic roads are, where those alerts will pop up, I can scroll up from the bottom, which does work with my gloves on, and scroll down a little bit and toggle on high traffic roads. And you can see right there on screen, those high traffic roads have gone red. Well, red dashed. Anyway, so I can turn those alerts off and have just the visual indication of those high traffic roads on screen when I'm on the map screen. Okay, now zipping around the corner here, if you have the alerts on, the alerts will pop up on any screen. So this is only good if you're using or writing the map screen. But you can see here, 
Okay, car back on the radar, but there are high traffic roads ahead. That did alert me before I got to the road, which was a lot better than before when I was actually on the road. So there's a configuration option that you can go with by showing the visualization of those high traffic roads and turning off those alerts. So what I'd love to see in the not too distant future for this feature is real time traffic information given to us. Not just warning us of high traffic roads at any time of the day, when in fact most of the time of the day this road exists, it's not really high traffic. As you can see here at the moment, there's not too many cars on this road. Not really much of an ask given every other device that does navigation out of the road can give us this information and Garmin already have that reliance on that data connection for road hazard alerts, live tracking and other services. Before getting to the system wide things to disable, this is the last per profile option. I'll switch off and it is this screen here asking you to track your consumption after a ride. Now if you don't want it to ask that, go to your profile, nutrition, hydration, and from there just simply toggle off the track consumption and you won't be prompted with that nag screen at the end of any ride. Now for a closer look at the system wide settings which relate to your fitness as a whole, so not profile based. First up, let's look at turning off the recovery time. Now we go to the system menu for this, my stats recovery okay it's giving me a 29 hour recovery time after my short ride today okay i don't really want to follow this so it's the three dots at the top and disable right recovery time has now been disabled from here under my stats there are three other things we could disable as well which will pop up and sometimes nag you if you've happened to hit a certain goal or change your performance of some type and that's under performance notifications so under here we can turn off performance condition, new VO2 max if you hit that, although that might be handy to know, and training effect. If you just want to ride your bike and you're not following any plan, you'd want to use a Garmin device and have it not nag you, I'd recommend turning all three of those things off. Okay, from there, back, 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 and there we go. So that's recovery time disabled, performance condition, VO2 max notifications, and training effect all turned off. No longer will they nag you after a ride. On to the last thing that I'll cover in this video today, and that is the removal of the daily suggested workout, which shows up when you're not even following a training plan. Now this one is tricky to find because if you have the training glance on your screen, then training doesn't show up as an option here on the menu. If you don't have that training glance, then training will be on the main menu. Anyhow, I can click on training here. Now it's not under training plan, it's under workouts. We go daily suggested workout, three dots at the top, Show on home screen, we toggle that off. We go back, back, back. And your home screen now has, well, still has your training glance there. Let's get rid of that as well. Okay, scroll down, scroll down. Button there, let's remove training because we can do our own. Let's replace that with something that I find extremely useful and that is sunrise and sunset. And we'll put that right at the top of our glances and there we go. No more information that I'm not going to follow anyway, but sunrise and sunset, it's actually useful information to have on screen. Anyhow, that's how to remove the daily suggested workout popping up on your home screen when you're not following a plan. Okay, with those options now configured on this device and a lot of those nag screens now toggled off, this is less demanding of my attention when I'm out on the bike. Now don't get me wrong, I love technology, I love information, but sometimes it can be a little bit too much. All right, we'll leave it there for today. If you've enjoyed this video or found it informative, give it a like or thumbs up and do the YouTube thing. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out. And my final ask today is hit me up in the comments if you want to see Virtual Partner as an option to disable on these units. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on Virtual Partner. Is it useful? And in throwing that grenade, I'll leave it there. We'll see you soon.